Well, <laughs> I guess he can't blame the machine for attempting to defend itself. I, I mean, look, I, look, I'm, I'm glad that there's some vigor in the responses to this trailer. I said that yesterday. I'm very glad about that because it gives you a window into where the lines are, what really gets someone out of bed, what people really care about. And the reality is that people, what they really care about is decorum. What they really care about is uh, making sure that the power is brokered to the right people, making sure that that uh, the institutions and the, 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 the structures are protected against against dissidents, uh, you know, things like that. That's what people really care about because um, critical theory hasn't re uh, garnered this kind of response. Black liberation theology has not garnered this kind of response. Egalitarianism, women preaching in your, in your services has not uh, garnered this kind of response. But this issue, mean-sounding words and editing that makes people look bad, people who are teaching bad things, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, well, anyway, we got yesterday we got, you know, Al Mohler here, you know, and let me just read his words here, and we're going to talk about this, some of this stuff. We got, yes, folks. I've here's what it says. Yes, folks. I've now seen the Founders Ministry tra video trailer, and I'm alarmed at how some respected SBC leaders are represented. Southern Baptists expect and deserve respectful and honest exchange of ideas. I am convinced that we are all capable of this. Hey, man, you, you can see what he really cares about. It's respected leaders being criticized. He doesn't like that. He doesn't like respected leaders. We've got the anointed class. We've got the untouchables. we got the made guys, and you better not say anything about a made guy because you could get whacked. You could get whacked for that. Well, you know what? i, I got to be honest. I'll speak for myself here. I don't worry about getting whacked by the big Eva thought police. I just don't. It's just not on my radar. I'm not looking for power. I'm not looking for influence, at least not that kind of influence. He continues. He says, I've also long known and enjoyed the company of the folks who made the video and the folks offended by the video, and I'm hopeful that Founders Ministry will respond appropriately and in a way that affirms their intentions to be a responsible voice in the SBC. Well, I'll tell you right now, I don't speak for Founders, but I know the Founders Ministry guys, and I know that they are looking for respectful and honest exchange of ideas. That's what they're looking for. But you know what? They've been shut down probably just as much as I have. I've been looking for this as well, and I get shut down at every turn because at the end of the day, we've got one side of this issue that does want this kind of debate and dialogue, and we've got another side of this issue that wants to call you racist, misogynist, sexist, you know, bigoted, all that kind of stuff. And you know what? We're sick of it. <laughs> we're sick of it. So we're blowing the lid off this thing. And I don't speak for founders. You know what I mean? I speak for myself. I'm very glad to see what founders is doing. Very glad to see it. He says, here in the heat of July is another reminder that how we engage and represent one another is as important as what we argue and who we engage. Let's encourage one another to good works, good theology, and a good mood. Now back to my children. This is an interesting thing because you hear this kind of thing all the time. How you argue and how we engage is just as important as what we argue. No. <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> no, it isn't. Now, if he means like sinful ways, of course. I mean, we don't want to sin in how we engage. Of course. Obviously, that's true. But that's not really what I think he means here. What he, what, what he means here is about uh, doing things the polite Southern Baptist way, the way that he does. The way that he does, which has led to not a single ounce of pushback, at least any pushback that has had any impact whatsoever. So he wants you to do it his way. He doesn't like when people do it with aggressive sounding words. Okay? Um, sorry. <laughs> sorry, because I've read the Bible. And that's not how the prophets speak. That's not how the, the apostles spoke. They spoke to different people in different ways. And to the power structures, the ones that are letting this stuff happen, the ones that are syncreti syncretistic with some of this stuff, they get the harshest rhetoric. And you know what? I'm, I'm glad for it. I'm glad for it. So that's Al Mohler. Here's Jason Allen. Now, Jason Allen is, I, I, I've, I've seen more pushback from Jason Allen than I have from many of the, uh, the head honchos of these Southern Baptist senators. So good on Jason Allen. I appreciate it. But he's also, you know, he's got to be political as well. So he's going to distance himself also. He goes this. He says, this trailer is either a clickbait promo piece or it foreshadows a movie that's uncharitable and unhelpful. <laughs> unhelpful for what? You see, that's the question I have for Jason Allen. Unhelpful for what? Unhelpful for you? Unhelpful for the Southern Baptist power structures? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. 
Founders Ministry has often played a constructive role in SBC life, but I'm afraid this video isn't such an occasion. These issues demand we engage with clarity and charity, and we must. Yeah, sure. So I, I, I'd like to see you say even one word about people on, this, on the other side here, Eric Mason, Thabiti Anyabwili, all these people that are bringing destructive heresies into the church. I'd like to see an ounce of this kind of vigor. I see a little bit from you, though, Jason, so I appreciate that. But the reality is that this video, this, 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 this uh, movie, um, this trailer might be unhelpful for some things. It's definitely unhelpful for people to go on as if nothing's happening, as if the status quo is okay. The status quo is not okay. It is not okay. Not anymore. We're sick of it. Here's Danny Aiken. <laughs> Here's Danny Aiken. My comments about the upcoming Founders Ministry documentary. While at the 2019 Southern Baptist Convention annual meeting, I sat down for a short interview with my friend Tom Askell of Founders Ministries for what I understood to be a discussion about the authority of Scripture for an upcoming documentary. As a Southern Baptist who has staked my whole life of my ministry and on the authority, inerrancy, and sufficiency of Scripture, I was happy to share my convictions on the matter. Today, I was disappointed to see the trailer for that documentary. What I saw was edited footage that I believe to be misleading, which misrepresents important issues and what leaders in the Southern Baptist Convention actually affirm. And it'd be nice to hear some examples of that. Exactly what was misleading about it. That's what I'd like to know. Anyway, at this important time in our convention, we have an opportunity to model what it means to be part of the kingdom of Christ. Peaceable, gracious, and fair, even in our disagreements. This is what it should look like for churches of varied convictions within the bounds of Baptist Face of Message 2000 to cooperate together for the spread of the gospel to the ends of the earth. We certainly have important issues to deal with in the SBC. On that, Dr. Askell and I are in full agreement. However, Despite our friendship and mutual respect for one another, we do not see eye to eye in the best way to address these issues. I have concerns about what tone, tenor, and content of the full documentary will be, and I have requested that my associating with and contribution to this film be removed. I hope my brothers will reconsider their strategy for communicating our deeply held Southern Baptist conviction that the Bible is our sole foundation and authority for all faith and life. Yeah, that'd be really nice if you could talk about the, the, the authority of the scripture when it actually matters in issues that are infecting your seminary and your convention. When it actually matters. Where are you? Where are you? Resolution 9 passed. Where's the authority of scripture? Where is all this stuff? <laughs> your method is not working. And yeah, I'd be willing to bet that, that Tom Askell and you don't agree on the best method, methods to go forward. And guess who we know for a fact their methods won't work? Yours. <laughs> Yours, Dr. Aiken. See, Tom Askell's approach and this movie might not work. It might not work. I agree. It might not be the right tone. It might not strike the right balance. It might not reach the right people. It might not. It might not. It might not. But guess whose approach definitely isn't working when in your seminary, Dr. Cohn's, uh, James Cohn's ideas are being taught, but not without mentioning him because we don't want to put any stumbling blocks in the way for people to actually put their guards up when we're teaching dangerous, dangerous stuff in our seminaries. Your method definitely doesn't work. Dr. Askell's may or may not work, but excuse us for trying something new. <laughs> excuse us for trying something new. Anyway, so this is the, this is the big wigs, right? These are the big boys that responded to this thing. But a lot of other people had a lot of problems too. A lot of people had problems with this documentary. Here's uh, one that I saw that was pretty interesting. He says, no, I, I, well, this is a response to me. So uh, yesterday I was tweeting like crazy uh, in support of this this trailer, and I, I, I stand by my words, of course. Um, but anyway, nothing gets this is what I said. Nothing gets the machine out of bed faster than some aggressive sounding words by biblically faithful ministers. Here are some encouraging, hopefully, words for the brothers. I sent some encouraging words to founders because I'm praying for the guys, you know. And here's what somebody responds here: I don't think it's mean words so much as deceptive ways to use his conversation. Now. Um, <laughs> what I find interesting about comments like this is like, okay, so, so deceptive words. So, so, so it, it sounded to me like this guy had some inside information onto the content of the conversation, because if you know it's deceptive, then you must know what the actual conversation was about and you could show how it was deceptive. So I asked him, I said, sounds like you've got some good inside info. I'd be interested in hearing what the deception is. Please DM me if you want to pursue so, uh, if you don't want to put someone on blast for it. And it turns out he doesn't. 
It turns out he doesn't. He says that, well, because Dr. Moeller asked for honesty and clarity, that means that it was deceptive. And that's just really an assumption. So, you know, honestly, I wouldn't, if it was me, I, you know, you don't have to go by what I would do, but if it was me, I wouldn't call something deceptive unless I could demonstrate how it was deceptive. You know what I mean? That's just me. I don't know. But it seems like a lot, awful lot of people are, are, are know a lot about the context of these conversations uh, because they're, they know that they were taken out of context. So, I mean, maybe I just don't have the same connections you guys do. This is a good one. <laughs> this guy, uh, Christopher Mullins, responded to me. I, 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 I posted the trailer. I said, give this a watch. And he said, this is the Trump wing of SBC try, uh, trying to bring discredit to people like Dr. Moore and Al Mohler because they're outspoken about real Donald Trump. The Church of Donald Trump, LOL. <laughs> I should have known that this is going to be blamed on Trump. And actually it is. It's definitely going to be blamed on Trump. And people are going to start saying stuff like this. This is Trump's new America where using mean words and rhetoric is common and accepted. Trump is the one who did this. It's going to be all Trump. I don't know if the Founders guy supported Trump. I, I honestly have no idea. This guy, Christopher, is responding to me. I didn't support Trump. So, I mean, whatever. All right. So we got that. We got here. Uh, oh, this is a good one. This is a this is a pro guy. This is a pro guy, Pedro Camino. He says they've been influenced by some rowdy Presbyterians, and I gotta say, man, some Baptists know how to party too. <laughs> good on you guys, founders. You guys know how to party too. I, I gotta be honest. I thought all the rebel rousers were Presbyterians, but it turns out that we've got some Baptists who know how to boogie, and I'm grateful for you guys. I love you, Baptists. I really do. Now, by far, oh, this is, this is uh, not the last one. I, uh, one more after this. And this is, this is another common piece of pushback. Nathan's not the only guy saying this, but this is a common piece of pushback that I saw. And um, it, says, it's like, it goes like this. He says, serious question. Why not approach it like this? Quote, as I listen, what should someone who disagrees in certain important respects do if he or she would not like to not only respectfully listen, but engage in discussion about differences, perhaps even argue and even attempt to persuade? End quote. And, and I got to be honest, like, like this is asked as if this has not been an approach that has been tried. You know, I think a lot of people just kind of assume what goes on uh, with some of these conversations. Like people look at some of the videos that I put out and they say, well, some of them are pretty aggressive. And so you can't just be aggressive all the time. And then, I, and then I'll ask a question. I'll ask a follow-up question. You know, what percentage of my videos have you watched? You know, just roughly. And they'll be like, five, maybe, 5%. And so I said, okay. So... Would you would you say, would you say that about ninety five percent? Let's you know let's just say ninety ninety percent of my videos nine out of ten videos that I put out you haven't seen. Yeah, yeah that sounds right. So how can you speak uh, positively about my aggressive tone? That's all I do is aggression. Is in in, in if only seen ten percent of my videos? No, well, I really can't. Yeah, that's right. You can't because I've asked nicely. I've asked calmly many times. I've asked politely, respectfully, honestly, so many times for dialogue, so many times. That approach has not worked. I will continue to do it because I think maybe one day it will. <laughs> maybe one day it will. But for now, if that's not going to get your attention, maybe exposing your nonsense will get some attention. How do you like that? You got a problem with that? Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know. If you don't like that method, if you don't like that approach, then don't use it. I mean, but the thing is, I, I, you know, you can't – look, people who are sitting back doing nothing – I'm not saying Nathan's one of these, by the way. I'm just saying people in general. People who are sitting back, ineffective, having no impact on the conversation, not stopping the, the march of progressives in our seminaries, in our conventions, in our uh, presbyteries, people that are sitting back, ineffective, doing nothing, you got – look, fine. You know, you have things to say about what we should do, but guess what? We're not going to do the things that aren't working anymore. They just don't work. We're not going to do them. We're going to go with other biblical methods for doing th this, doing this work. Maybe they will work. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we'll find out. Now, by far, this was the, the, biggest, uh, the biggest controversy, by far. And, and I got to be honest with you, I, 
I've, I've, I know Rachel Den Hollander's name. Um, I wouldn't have been able, yeah, I wouldn't have been able to to pick her out of a lineup if you asked me. I, I didn't, I don't know what she looks like, and I only know a little bit about what she does. You know, I know that she was, a, you know, the she's a lawyer. She was you know, the first person to come out about that creep, uh, you know, sexual abuser in the, in, in gymnastics, um, and so good stuff, man. Ep- epic. That, I, I love that stuff. I've heard a lot of great things about this woman, Rachel Den Hollander. So, um, but I wouldn't have been able to pick her out of this lineup, right? And so, this is the this is the line of uh, of debate that most people have chosen because I think it's because it's the most the one that has the best optics for them. But it's not going to work, guys. Look, look, you guys that are that are clutching your pearls over this, maladying, white knighting for Rachel Den Hollander. It's not going to work. Like, look, I'm not look. I don't, don't misunderstand me. Her husband white knighting for her is exactly what he needs to do. Good on him, man. Good on him. You defend your wife. Absolutely. But all you other white knights out there, this isn't going to (laughs) work. You know what I mean? You guys are out of your minds. I heard one guy say, well, you guys said that you were talking about demons and principalities and you showed a picture of Rachel uh, Den Hollander. So you guys are saying she's a demon. (laughs) Like, you really believe that? (laughs) My goodness. If you really believe that, I am extra happy that this movie is being made because you are playing right into our hands right into their hands they they're they're showing that this is a problem and you're demonstrating it in your pushback it's so amazing anyway this is chris bolt he's uh he made he makes a pretty good argument here i think out of all the ones that i've seen that have been focused on miss mrs uh, den hollander uh this is the one that i think is most interesting most relevant so he says he says this he says Assume for the sake of argument, I agree with everything that the Founders Ministry believes and is trying to accomplish with their forthcoming video. It does not follow that the trailer for that video is unobjectionable. In fact, the opposite is the case. What are the problems? I agree with that. You know, just because you agree with what Founders Ministry is trying to do doesn't mean that the trailer was good. It doesn't mean that it was effective. It doesn't mean that it was didn't have problems. That's true. He, Chris Bolt is 100% right. By the way, it doesn't mean that it does either. <laughs> just, just so you know. Anyway, he continues. The trailer features an interview with a gentleman talking about manipulation through guilt leading to destructive behavior. And at the same time he is speaking, shows clips of SBC messengers holding up, becoming a church that cares well for the abuse signs. Okay, good point. The trailer also features an interview with... um, uh, whatever his name is. Oh, yeah, Owen Strawn. Yeah, this, this is the guy who's probably... I mean, this guy probably wants nothing to do with this film either. <laughs> Uh, you got to understand he's got, he's got, he's got uh, a platform to maintain. He's got a respectability to maintain. I get it. I, I get it. Commenting on the principalities and powers of Ephesians 6, with re- with a re- which is a reference to demons, while at the same time showing a clip of Rachel Den Hollander speaking at the ERLC panel at the SBC. And this is the picture. So apparently they blurred it out. And I had some people asking, is this intentional? Is this, is this editing intentional? And I'm like, dude, do you know what a filmmaker is? <laughs> Of course, it's it. everything that a filmmaker does is intentional. Uh, maybe they've, everything's an exaggeration. Maybe there's some things that happen on accident. But most things that a filmmaker does is intentional. These people are artists. They do things on purpose. Okay, so this is the picture. A lot of people recognize this was Rachel Den Hollander. I, I wouldn't even have recognized it if it was this picture because I, I, I just don't, I mean, she's not my circles, I guess. I knew, I knew about her. I knew what, a little bit about what she does and all that but that's about it i mean i very very would not have recognized her anyway um and he says as you can see the short clip is heavily edited why to match the clips of other speakers in the video who are in some form or fashion representative of the problems in the sbc filters are used to make some clips jittery and blurred he's right (laughs) he's absolutely right um he says filters are also used to show founders representatives in a better light and color this use of filters, music, and narrations is quite likely intended to produce a particular type of feeling to be associated with each of the clips. It is clear who is portrayed as good and bad. A brief clip of the theologically liberal egalitarian Nadia Bowles Weber, that's also otherwise known as that Jezebel lady, <laughs> is shown immediately before Den Hollander with Strawn's voice speaking of the aforementioned demonic powers. Now, other objections to the trailer have been raised, but I'm not interested in those here. Okay. We're going to talk about his questions in a minute, but here's the point. The point is, 
They're talking about demons, principalities, and powers. They show that Jezebel lady who is representative of the demonic powers in the church. According, this is the, this is the this is what Chris is saying. I think that's probably accurate. And then it shows other pictures of other people, and one of the people is Rachel Den Hollander. And what Chris is trying to get you to believe is that the editors of this of this trailer. And again, I had I want everyone to know I had nothing to do with making of this trailer. I I wish I was involved in the project, but I'm not. <laughs> But so I didn't make this trailer. But but he wants you to believe that they're calling Rachel a demon, or at least a demonic power, or at least demonized, or something like that. And they're putting her on the same wavelength as Nadia Bowles Weber in terms of the negative influence that she's having on the church. So they want you to associate Rachel with that Jezebel lady. And um, and I think that there's probably some truth to this. I don't think that they're. <laughs> I don't think it's the same idea though that 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 Chris does. Because if you look at the trailer, what happens is he, he talks about the principalities and the powers and you know demonic influences and stuff, and it shows these shots of these people blurry, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then immediately after, the context is women teaching and preaching in the church. Immediately after, that's the very next thing that's said. Tom Buck is talking about women preaching in the church. And what did they just show before that? Women teaching and preaching in the church. That's what I think it was referring to. Now, I don't know for a fact because I'm not the artist here. I'm just the humble viewer. <laughs> just the humble viewer. But when I saw it, that's what I said because I, I didn't know who Rachel was. I had no idea. All I saw was a woman with a microphone speaking, presumably at some kind of a church function, some kind of conference or something like that. I don't know because Tom Buck was talking about women teaching and preaching in the church and how that's okay all of a sudden with the egalitarian movement. And right before it, we were seeing women doing exactly that. And that's what I, That's what I thought. So I didn't think, oh, this woman's being compared to a demon. I didn't think any of that. I didn't think, oh, you know, her work in sexual abuse, that's what people are saying. That's a problem. <laughs> are you serious? You think Founders Ministry is for sexual abuse? Come on, man. <laughs> you guys are proving the point of why this, video, this movie is necessary. I mean, you guys are playing right into their hands, right into their hands. You seriously are. Um, but no, that's not what I thought at all. I thought it had to do with the women teaching and preaching in the church, which I would defy you to say that this idea of egalitarianism and women having authority in the church teaching and preaching when the Bible says isn't, that that is not a demonically influenced idea. It is because it doesn't come from the Bible. The Bible says no. People are saying yes, that's a demonically influenced idea. Am I saying that Rachel Den Hollander is a demon? No, I am not. Am I saying that she's demonized and she's possessed by a demon? No, I'm not. Am I saying that she's even part of the egalitarian movement? I have no idea. I have no idea. But what I am saying is that what Tom Buck was talking about, people who say that you, women and, and men, uh, women should be teaching and preaching and exercising authority in the church, that is an idea that comes from demons, not the Bible. That's un indisputable indisputable if you're a complementarian anyway let's uh respond to his questions chris bolt continues this is going to be a long video wow he says here are my questions what message is sent by the trailer mentioning guilt manipulation with the sbc holding up a book on how to care for abuse survivors in the church i mean i don't know, I, you know wait wait for the movie i guess i, I don't know what message is being sent by showing Den Hollander alongside Bulls Weber and the discussion of demons i don't know chris but i'm pretty sure it's not rachel is a demon <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I, I don't know, but hey, you know, I guess you're entitled to your opinion. Oh, man. Here's the next question. I, assuming I agree with founders on all the current issues in the SBC, wouldn't I also want to say that the problem of abuse is a real problem and that it's a real problem in particular for the SBC? This problem is not a mere matter of worldly perceptions. Christians see it too. I, do you really think that founders thinks that, that sexual abuse is not a problem? I mean, my goodness, Chris, I, this is what you're going with? This is what you're going with for your pushback? <laughs> uh, the implication of the carefully edited movie trailer is that something dark and even demonic has made its way into the SBC through addressing sexual abuse and through individuals like Den Hollander. No, that's not the implication that's necessarily being made. That's what you have interpreted from this short trailer because I just gave you what my reaction to it was and it had nothing to do with de demons uh, coming in and stopping sexual abuse. 
I mean, Chris, you're really not this obtuse, are, are you? you? Do you really think that the Founders Ministry people want to put forward the perception, the implication that they're making with their carefully edited footage is that it's demonic to be against sexual abuse? Are you really going to go with that? Man, we're not stupid. <laughs> this isn't going to work. This isn't going to work. I just gave you what my reaction was. I think it's pretty reasonable. And doesn't uh, rely on uh, the Founders Ministry men being monsters. But, but, you know, hey. Oh, man. This is bad because apart from the lack of wisdom in the selection of an editor, producer, who would create a provocative video that politicizes and weaponizes the issue of abuse, apart from the obvious difficulties with the ethics of the situation, including utilitarianism, it's bad because Founders has significantly fumbled the ball here. In 2015, I publicly noted a particular ministry that had gone far beyond reporting the truth about concerns with particular individuals and entities. At first, I caught a lot of flack, but then I watched insiders and supporters turn one by one. That's already happening here, too. Yes, Chris, I'm sure you are the champion of, uh, of all this. I'm sure you're the hero of this as well. Fine. If I were founders, I would fire the video editor. Fire him! <laughs> Issue an apology to Den Hollanders and try again. Although credibility may be shot, you fumbled the ball. Well, Chris, let's just say this in as real and as nice a way as possible. If you don't like it, try your method, I guess. Because, you know, let's just say I agreed with founders, what founders believes. Well, do you? I mean, you're not really giving us much here. You know what I mean? But but if you do, I mean, continue to do, to do your thing, I guess. I mean, yeah, you know, your strategy, I guess, it might be better. I don't know. I mean, I mean, look, look, I, I do not fault. Um, would I have done the trailer every every way that, that they did it? I don't know. I mean, I'm not an editor. I I didn't. I, I don't know what their goals are. I don't know what the mission of the movie is. I don't know what it's about. I don't know the context of of what they're trying to accomplish. I have an idea, but I'm not involved in it. So would I have done it everything the same way? No, I, I don't think I would have. Um, but I'm not a filmmaker. <laughs> I guess kind of technically I am. Um, but anyway, but but the point is though. That playtime's over. <laughs> we're not gonna we're not gonna um, play footsie with critical theory anymore. We're not gonna play footsie with all of this egalitarian stuff. We're just not gonna do it. We're not gonna do it. And just because this has made you clutch your pearls, Chris, and make up this fantasy about founders saying that sexual abuse and opposing it is demonized, that's crazy, man. You gotta understand. You sound like a conspiracy theorist. You really do. I mean, t t to take that seriously, would have we would have to just get rid of everything we know about Founders Ministry and say, you know what, they're really just monsters, and they love sexual abuse, and they want to make it seem like if you're against sexual abuse, you're a demon. That's what it would take for us to take you seriously, Chris. I just gave you a very easy, very legitimate-sounding, reasonable explanation that I don't know if it's true or not, but doesn't require me to think that Tom Askell and Jared Longshore are monsters. <laughs> <laughs> oh man you know i think uh i think um someone had said this this is pretty funny um i think this is let me see if i can find this really quick but i'm, I'm trying to find it anyway jacob brunton you know this is a guy you know well, I, you, me and him don't see eye, eye, eye to eye on a lot of things but jacob brunton said this he said what what founders should do is take out the two seconds with uh with miss uh mrs dollenhander D uh, Do dollenhander yeah Rachel, whatever her last name is, take out those two seconds, call their bluff, and once it's sufficiently called, say, okay, you, you good with this movie now? <laughs> because it's not about that. That's just an excuse. You guys don't like this approach. You guys don't like the fact that the power structures are about to be exposed. The movers and shakers don't like it either, and they're trying to distance themselves from this. Well, guess what? Founders could cave on this. Founders could cave on this, and it doesn't matter because we're not stupid, and those of us in the pews aren't going to play by your rules anymore. You have let this happen under your nose, and we're sick of it. We're sick of it. I'm not saying revolt against your pastor. I'm not saying rebel rouse against your church. I'm not saying that. But the reality is, Dr. Moeller, I, I love you and I've learned a lot from you, but you're not in control of me. You're not the Pope, and I know you don't think you're the Pope. And so, no, I don't have to do things your way. Because we've seen in the Bible again and again and again that we need to defend the truth and we need to prepare for war and we need to put on the armor of God against our sin and we need to, and we need to make sure that we're striving for truth and be ready in season and out of season and all this stuff. 
This is stuff that's required for Christians. It's absolutely required. And this is why it matters, guys. This is why it matters. Let me just level with you here. The church of God is worth it. It's worth fighting for. I will not. Look, I'll guarantee you, you come to my house and you threaten my wife and you threaten my kids and I'm going to get medieval. Okay? I'm going to get medieval. And I will do what it takes to do to defend them. And as an analogy, the church is worth it. And we will do what we have to do within the bounds of God's law in order to defend the church. We will. And the reality is many of you have been sitting on your hands doing what so many years ago I heard this one guy say, well, I wouldn't defend my wife. I would just pray to God to help me. Pray to God to help you. Absolutely. But it's time for some action. Dress for action like a man. Your method hasn't worked. Somebody else is going to come along and say enough is enough. We're not letting this poison seep into our churches. We're not letting this darkness come through the back door. Yeah, this was edited in such a way to make make some things look shady and other things not. That's on purpose. Absolutely. Because guess what? There are some shady things going on in the upper levels of the machine of Big Eva. Shady things. And they've made up a set of rules that work to their advantage and not yours. They've demonstrated contempt for the church of God, the regular Joes, the regular Joe six packs like me in the pews. They've, they've demonstrated their contempt for you so many times. And enough is enough. We're not playing by your rules anymore. This is a long video, but I hope it was helpful. God bless. Satan does is he wants to make you feel guilty when you've been forgiven. That is all over this social justice thing. People are trying to cultivate guilt in you where you don't have it even. Look, if you have guilt, you should feel guilty. And you should repent. There are people in the social justice thing that want you to feel like a sexist. Want you to feel like a misogynist. Want you to feel like a racist. Want you to feel like a bigot when you're none of those things. That comes from the pit of hell. And those people who are doing that are doing not the Lord's work in that time. In that moment, they're doing the devil's work. And it's time. 